Hello everyone, this is a set, the first of a set rather, of a few uh, introductory tutorials of how EU4 works. One of its greatest uh, issues is the fact that it is rather to understand. So we'll start with the Ottomans, as they are probably the easiest empire in the game, at the early stage of the game. But they also, in addition, they also have a lot going on. So they have a lot of weak, uh, small forces near them. They start at war, which allows it to be fairly easy to show how uh, the war works. And uh, they have a few larger uh, enemies around them. But this one is just about the extreme basics of how the game works. And so what we're going to be doing right now is basically just talking about uh, this tree here that uh, determines how your country works. And then we'll go into more detail later on. So we start out, actually at the very top here, is your money supply. Very important in the game, of course, because once you start going into negative money, uh, you have to either take out loans or you go more or less bankrupt and your people get really pissed at you. Next is your manpower, which is how many troops you can make. So each one of these is a thousand. So this guy right here is 1,000 troops. As he uh, attacks in combat and deals damage, you'll uh, lose men, which you then have to replace. In addition, if you make any new troops, it'll come out of this manpower pool. And as you can see, it slowly regenerates in time. Uh, this is your stability, which is how stable your country is at the time. It gives you various bonuses. Um, let's see. So if you look on here, this will show you what every bonus uh, ability is. It, it's very important to keep this usually at at least plus one for the most part. Uh, we're not going to worry about it too much for it right now, but. Next is your prestige, which is how impressive your country is to the rest of the world. Uh, this gives you various bonuses, as you can see right there. It uh, goes up to 100, and it always will go down, uh, usually fairly slowly. So you have to keep doing impressive things, like winning battles and winning wars and things like that. Usually uh, battles and uh, finishing a war uh, with a success are the fastest way to raise this. Next is legitimacy which is your right to rule, more or less. 100 is uh, the maximum, and 0 is the minimum. If it gets too low, uh, revolts will start popping up uh, fairly quickly, and you'll have other uh, negatives to this. Um, power projection is something they added newly, uh, new, which has to do with your rivals, which we'll get into later. But basically, if you get a rival, they have to be fairly strong. So, like, for example, we'll probably get these little fellows down here because we will eventually want to take over uh, Egypt as the Ottomans and maybe I don't know uh, maybe Naples if we want to try to uh, uh, attack into Italy or somewhere else but we don't have to worry about that too much uh, probably Georgia we want their gold mine mm, delicious gold mine so uh, let's see so well, the, that'll probably be dealt with in the diplomatic uh, tutorial. So these three little things right here are your second most important things to keep an eye on. Your admin power, your diplomatic power, and your military power. If you notice, uh, they all have different monthly increases. Uh, the first ruler you get is extremely skilled, which gives a ton of this stuff. But uh, this is where pretty much every building you build, every diplomatic decision you make, uh, pretty much everything but building and maintaining an army requires the use of these. These are also how you uh, deal with tech. So uh, moving on to, here's your government, despotic monarchy. Uh, you can change your government after you've researched a certain number of uh, techs. Like for example, right now we could immediately switch to this uh, feudal monarchy if we wanted to. It gives uh, some, I believe it's a 50% legitimacy hit, but otherwise you can change pretty much as long as you have the tech and the amount of admin points required. And uh, if you mouse over it here, it'll tell you what it does. So right now we have one less national revolt risk, which if you see some of these, 
for example, this is orthodox. This is the revolt risk, and these are all the modifiers to it. Uh, moving back here. Uh, this is our ruler. And uh, we have no air yet, but it shouldn't take too long. And then these are his stats, which are quite amazing. Actually, extremely amazing. Most of the time, especially as a human player, you're only going to end up in like the 1 to 4 range for the most part. Maybe 1 5. You'll pretty much never see a 6. That's like uh, NPCs only. Uh, these here are your advisors. They will give you bonuses. So this gives you a bonus to your monthly uh, gain. Of course, they cost quite a bit of money. So right now we're making about two gold, which is not very much. So we could afford one of these. Uh, I mean, we'll probably not even deal with this. Well, let's see. Let's give ourselves. And uh, I don't really care that much. Uh, he would be pretty good, but we don't really don't have to worry about the army right now. Oh, get hired. So now, if you look back up here, we have uh, our uh, Sultan in addition, an additional plus one now. And you'll always get at least three. So even if you are, say your king's dead and you have no heir, uh, you might be put under basically uh, a ruling council. And this might be anywhere from all zeros to a few other low numbers. But for the most part, you'll always get at least three every month. So. Uh, unless you have uh, several things that give you negatives, which uh, we can look at that later. Here's the diplomacy skill, which we'll talk more about later and for your rivals. Uh, these are your essentially your natural enemies. So these are the people who really don't like you, even at the start. So obviously uh, Byzantium doesn't like us because we want Constantinople and we've taken over most of the land. Um, and as you see, if you click on any nation, you will switch to the diplomatic screen where you can look at all your different options. Now let's move back. And uh, Venice doesn't like us because they have some land around here. And we're at war with Albania, so they definitely don't like us, though. Oddly enough, they're not on here. Uh, anyway, moving on. Economy. This is the short list of how much money you get. So every... Let's look at our capital here. So this six here is the base tax of how much you get per year. And then you see there's some modifications here, mainly based on your food, or not food, but your trade item here. So as you make more of this, you'll, that's the production, and then add it up all together is how much you get from this province each, uh, each year. Meanwhile, in this screen, this is how much you get per month. So it adds up all your provinces, and then subtracts what you're spending and so notice now we have a balance of about one and yeah, not too much another important thing to remember is since we're at war we can also raise war taxes which lowers the land maintenance and naval maintenance by 20 percent and this can actually save you a ton of money once you're a larger nation right now it doesn't mean much but for a mere 50 power you can uh, get a lot more money so but anyway so this is uh we're not going to really look too much about this Basically, at peacetime, you want this to be usually all the way down, maybe about halfway if you think someone's about to surprise attack you. If you have a lot of rebels, you might want to keep this all the way up for a while. But notice the money change between here. So I'm getting about one, now I'm getting about five. So, uh, so lowering your army maintenance during peacetime is a ton of money. And it's very important, especially for smaller nations, like if you play anything here in uh, the HRE, you're going to want to have that sort of uh, that lower amount when you're not at war, just to get some money. All right, going back. So now here's trade. We're gonna not gonna mess with this too much at the moment, as you can see. There's a lot of different stats here. Nothing too much you have to worry about just for this intro introduction, except you want to be collecting trade money, and we'll show you how that works later. Uh, technology, uh, these are your different techs. As you get, so if you mouse over this, it'll show you. We have to get 748 power in admin here to be able to buy it. So this just keeps going up and up and up, and as you can see, we can keep 1,248 at 
So after we get 748, we could buy this to get a new uh, technology. And these go up to, I think, is it like 35? Uh, somewhere about around there. Maybe 32-ish, I don't know. But the, high th the low 30s is the max technology level. Ideas are things we'll get later, but here are all the different ideas. What they do is they, so actually the ne very next tech level here, we will get be able to pick an idea. So what all these do is give you uh, certain ways to focus your nation. So for example, we could get grab religious ideas fairly early to begin converting all of our land here uh, to our own religion. We could get administrative ideas for uh, this adaptability here, which is the core creation cost, which makes it much cheaper for us to take over land and then turn it into our own, which we'll get into a little later as to how that all works. Um, diplomatic, we, we have more uh, relations, so we can have more vassals and things like that, and also make it much easier to fabricate claims. Um, trade, of course, and if you want to explore the new world at all, exploration or, uh, actually, exploration in this case would be the, the main one. Expansion is the other one. Which I noticed they moved over. But you can pick one or the other, and they're both able to move you further along into exploring new areas of the world. So as the Ottomans, we don't really care about any of that, because we want to conquer uh, Asia, maybe Russia, Heck, maybe Europe, if we're really feeling like it. We don't have to worry too much, though, about uh, exploring the New World, because we can get far more, far enough money just cr uh, controlling almost all the Mediterranean. And, of course, uh, all the military ideas are very useful, especially any discipline bonuses, which make your armies much more powerful, or morale bonuses, which let them fight longer and thus do more damage to the enemy. So, um... That's a brief overview ideas. We'll probably look at it more when we uh, check out the economy and uh, technology. So these are your missions. Uh, they're fairly related to what you're doing at the time. So like, this will probably be the first mission we take, which is we will want to take over Constantinople after we finish with Albania. These other are uh, additional ones, and these policies here subtract uh, admin, diplo, or military power, but in addition they give you uh, permanent bonuses as long as they're active. So if you have a ton of uh, extra power, which is pretty much only the Ottomans, uh, let's see, probably Western nations, and then maybe Eastern nations as well can really get away with, but if you have a bunch of power, in, or a bunch of these, uh, and you're almost at max, there's really no reason not to have a policy or so. And so you can look over these to see what these decisions do. Notice they each have requirements, which is the question mark, and then they have bonuses and negatives. And uh, that's about it for that. Okay, moving along. Stability. This is where you boost your stability. It always requires admin power. Admin power is probably the most important power, uh, so you'll want to try to use it sparingly for the most part. Uh, war exhaustion is how you... Uh, this shows how annoyed your people are with the ongoing war, how much you know time and effort and blood they've spent, and how uh, just exhausted, obviously, they are with it. So a lower number is better, and at, if you're at peace, this will slowly go down to zero. Uh, these are your rebels, which you notice we have a base revolt risk of minus two, which obviously means it's much less likely for people to start revolting. However, as we start taking territory, this will rise up. And these are the strongest rebels at the time. And if you have rebels taking over parts of your land, this will slowly start to, up, start to go up. Uh, religion, these are all the places that they are not our religion. So we probably won't, we'll mess with this a little later when we talk about uh, um, how actual controlling your uh, nation works. But uh, as a Muslim nation, you have this uh, current pi uh, piety that goes either up or down uh, due to decisions that you make and it'll change various bonuses so the higher it is the the easier it is to convert nations and uh, the more morale your armies have which is very nice and these are also the bonuses just for being uh, a member of the faith and what all of these do so 
Moving along. So here's your military overview screen. These are your units, which you can switch through. These are the technologies required for them. So you can swap from there. And you, if you have uh, any outdated units, you can show them. Sometimes you'll notice that some of the bonuses don't directly stack up, so you might want something that does more morale damage if you want to uh, take them out faster, but uh, don't worry about that too much. Okay. And your cavalry and uh, your artillery once you get it. And then these are all your naval units. And this uh, is important here, you have a force modifier, uh, your army tradition, we'll uh, go over all that military stuff later. And subjects is finally for if you have any vassal states. So that is the extreme uh, simplistic, what is this crap on my screen here? Uh, over here obviously is the time, which you can turn up or down or set uh, using the plus uh, or minus on, is the fastest, one of the fastest way on the computer anyway to increase uh, the speed or reduce the speed. Uh, the, these are your diplomats which we'll get into later uh, and your merchants. Your armies here you can swap by quickly and those little skull here means that they're taking attrition damage. If you mouse over it'll tell you how much, so 2%. So you're losing 2% of all your troops in the stack every month, which is uh, has to be replaced. So, I mean, sometimes you can just have them, and you'll always take some attrition damage if you're inside enemy territory. So that's usually one of the main reasons you want to invade with a large army and then try to conquer the land with a much smaller one. And these are where you can swap to your games really quickly. That is about all I'm going to get into for this uh, short introduction of how the interf how much of this uh, interface here works. We'll get into some uh, how the different map modes and things like that later. All right, thanks.